Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny along with my coach and mentor, actor Andy McPhee, and today we have Tommy Hollenstein. Hey man, how you doing? Doing great, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no g'day problem. Tommy. And g'day Doug. Good Doug. Uh, Tommy's in LA, correct? I Tommy? am. Yeah. San Fernando yeah. Valley Park. Oh, San Fernando. Yes, I'm in uh, LA, Studio City. Uh, currently just sitting at Burbank in my mobile office called a vehicle. <laughs> and go. Doug's in Arizona. So, uh, yeah, really appreciate you making the time, Tommy. And anyone, um, once they start following your, uh, your platform, they'll see how busy you are and what you've been up to. So can you just share a little bit with us? And Doug will jump in with some questions shortly. Just a little bit about your journey and, um, you know, uh, what led you to doing this incredible artwork from your chair? Well, it, you know, I mean, I, I grew up in L.A., grew up with a very active life, you know, surfing, skating, mountain biking, BMXing all my life. And about 37 years ago, just over 37 years, March 10th was the actual date, I had a mountain bike accident where I had injured my spinal cord and became a quadriplegic. And at that point, I was completely paralyzed from the neck on down. I could just barely shrug my shoulders. And during rehab, I spent 19 days in intensive care and six months in the rehabilitation hospital over in Northridge. And they were, you know, in recreational therapy, so they knew I liked to do art. I was an artist as a child. And so they're trying to teach me how to paint with a mouth stick, which there's a lot of great, amazing artists out there that do paint with a mouth stick, but it just wasn't fluid for me. It was just too close to, to my face. It was just not fluid. So artistically, I didn't do anything for quite a while. You know, I, I just went right back in the you know, I immersed myself first in a couple of years of therapy, and then I got back into the workforce, went to sell medical supplies and wheelchair accessible vans. But it was just out of the love for my first service dog, Weaver. I decided I was going to roll through some paint one day and have the dog walk through a puddle of paint to create a painting where he and I would just ah. we have all those memories, all the good times we had together. So that's how it first got started. And wow. Realized I could that's use amazing. The Here's the paintbrush. Well, and did you say that you used to get your your dog to walk through the paint i did that was the first painting i ever did just because i wanted to have tire great. tracks and paw prints of reminders <laughs> of all the great times he and i had together you know we went to a lot of great sporting events you know we went to gretzky's 800 second goal we went to the world cup soccer this you know the rose bowl we went to final four up in seattle where ucla won all the big events all you know the lakers championships the whole wow day. that back in the uh the, the, the Shaq uh, Kobe days, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. I love that. Doug, I'm sure you have some questions because I know I have a thousand. Yeah, where are you originally from and what was your upbringing like? You know, I was born in Hollywood, California, but raised in the San Fernando Valley. And my father was managing a restaurant when I was first born out in uh, Studio City, actually, Sherman Oaks, actually. And then he built up a bunch of restaurants and ended up getting his own restaurant in Calabasas. So we grew up in, uh, right near Calabasas and uh, I have three sisters and a brother. And, you know, I, mean, I just grew up the typical American uh, California childhood. You know, I mean, I started skateboarding at a very young age, started BMX biking, building my own bikes, taking them apart, tearing them apart. I started surfing at the age of 12 and then wow. just you know, fell in love with the California lifestyle. You know, all the extreme stuff. I just love adrenaline rush for sure. Wow. That's amazing, mate. Can I just jump in with a question that, um, and I'm sure it would come on to a lot of people's um, minds. Uh, what was it like for you? Like I had a friend of mine who was in the Israel military as a tank commander, and he's, he's also uh, through an accident ended up in a, a wheelchair. And I don't mean to say ended up, that's not sure. the right word to say, but you know what I mean. Um, um, and he... Uh, how uh, you just hear a train going past. <laughs> used I used to, to drive them back in Australia. That was my wow. job when I left school. I was an engineer on the railways for 14 years. So, yeah, I'm a bit of a train freak. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so my friend, he was in a tank and they were reversing back into a building and they actually hit the building. It wasn't in a war zone or anything. And this, the building collapsed and the cement pylons fell down right through the turret and crushed his back. And, you know, he's, he's very similar to you. He's, um, he's a leader with a, a big personal growth and development company. He continually does therapy. Uh, he's a singer. Um, I'll send you his link later on. He's got his own band. 
and then I hear what you do and I just go, wow, how, how did you mentally deal with, because being so active and all of a sudden that just stops, like just stops. That must have been traumatic, you know? I mean, it was, I mean, but I was just so happy to be alive because I mean, I literally died at the time of my accident. I mean, I saw wow. my body laying in that ditch and I wasn't in it. So, you know, when I got a second chance at life, I mean, I knew I just I had to make the best of it. You know, I was given a second chance. I was happy to be alive. There was 13 other people in the hospital with me with spinal cord injuries. And the majority of them were not accidents. They were, I mean, there were accidents as such, but like one kid was 13. His friends thought it'd be funny to loosen the front tire on his bike. So, of course, he's naturally pissed at those people. Uh, another guy was, you know, drunk and got into a car with a drunk driver and they hit a palm tree on high graduation. Wow. So mine was just a freak accident. So it made it much more easier to accept. And because I got the second chance of life, I just had, you know, I made the decision immediately. I was going to make the best of it, you know, and I'm, you know, like, yeah. I, you know, I was a competitor. You know, I mean, I competed in surfing on the West Coast. I, you know, I used to compete uh, BMXing, mountain biking, the whole bit. So I just took it as another challenge and I just had to go for it, you know, and I've been blessed with a really, really good life, you know, but it's, I mean, it's got its ups and downs, of course, I think it got its struggles, but you know, it's just, you've got to push forward. I mean, you, you what else are you going to do? You know, I mean, I, I don't want to just lay around and be miserable all day. That's for sure. Yeah. That's, um, well, wow, that's really inspirational. And the fact too, that you're so involved in sports, that mental attitude that a lot of athletes have is something that can drive you forward through adversity you know um right. e even extreme adversity um yeah that's and that's really interesting what you said about you actually saw your body laying in the ditch yeah absolutely wow yeah wow that's uh, that's that's another story for another time like that's wow. that's incredible mate and i Dang. do you ever have um anyone when you've shared that go Oh, are you sure? Because I believe you. Like the minute you said, right. I go, absolutely, because you saw it. And I've right. had things happen to me in my life where I've met someone. I absolutely had three witnesses with me, and they were my children. And this guy was not off this planet, I can tell you. But he he had a reason for meeting me, and he was at every stop. We were in a car. He was a homeless guy on foot, and everywhere we went, he was already there before us. Wow. He was he he was at a bus stop when we pulled up at the lights. We went further and we turned in the street and he was standing there in the middle of the street. And if I told this to anyone without witnesses, they would have went, yeah, cool, mate. Um, probably time to leave the weed alone. Um, yeah. But that happened. So, yeah, I totally get you. And that's it's amazing experience, mate. Doug, um, your turn. <laughs> I'm sure you've got plenty. Yeah. What method do you use for painting? I use the tires in my wheelchair. So I apply paint to the tires. I either have somebody behind me physically with a paint, a can of paint, applying the paint to the tires. Sometimes I'll have puddles of paint around the, the I paint on hardboard, like quarter inch masonite board. It's just a hard wood surface because the, the way the tires and the way I twist it and use so much torque and force um, will we'll, we'll tear up a canvas. I've done some canvases, but I've got to mainly kind of stick with a little bit of a straight line. But uh, mm. so I use the tires of my chair is my paintbrush. So how about wow. that? I That's all right. Pit bull He's, out there he, barking at somebody out front. Uh, <laughs> you got a, you got a pit bull, yeah. I've got a pit bull and I've got a Labrador laying right next to my side. My service dog. I've got a canine companion, oh. third service dog from the foundation. Oh wow, that's yeah. awesome. We interviewed another friend of ours. Just diverting a bit, um, I met him randomly. Uh, Steve Spiro. He's on the channel. He runs. Uh, uh, what's the correct name, Doug? It's not Start uh, Animal Rescue. Oh, oh yeah, he rescues. Um, he was he's from England. He was ex-military. He's an actor, comedian, but he spent his life rescuing dogs, and um, he used to rescue them from houses and places where the dogs were just near death. And he had this bus built, and these dogs get transported up to Oregon, rehabilitated, then put into homes. So Doug Doug's a dog lover. He's got uh, he just sadly lost one of his. His dog's a few weeks ago. Um, he's got another one. What's your dog? Is it a bully, uh, Doug? It's a pit bull, and her name is Bunny. Oh, pit... oh right. You've got a What's pit bull name? as well. Yeah. Bunny with an eye. Nice. <laughs> That's Very cool. cool. Um, so, you know, when you're talking about the painting, Tommy, 
uh, you actually have people that have to walk with you, like to keep putting the paint on the wheels. Right. Um, is, and now, does that affect like where you're painting and where they're walking? Like it sounds like a real process to, you know, have all this operational. Well, that's on the smaller pieces, yes. I mean, but just recently, I, like the project I was currently working on, that 20 foot by 400 foot painting, I designed a, a, a system where I have a bottle attached to my chair with a roller on it. So it feeds the paint consistently. So nobody was behind me on that project. So that was the first project I did with the bottle system. I'll probably use that system other places because typically the paintings that I'm working on in my studio here at the house where somebody's helping apply the paint are two foot by four foot, 24 inches by 24 inches, mm -hmm. 48 inches by 48 inches um, and so on. So the, those are easier to work on. So nobody's stepping on the boards as such. You know, it's yeah. a small enough surface that we can work around it. Um, but, uh, yeah, the bigger surface, that's why I had to come up with a system. I mean, because doing that, the, the project I just did, it was 1,000 boards that were 24 inches by 48 inches total. Wow. And we did 100 in the room at a time. And then I would apply four colors to the first 100 boards. Then we would take the last row, 20 boards, move that to the front, uh, then bring down another 100 fresh boards. And so I would, that would, then that would get five colors in the second room and then six colors in the next group of 107 colors. But they, that way they would all be attached by bringing that front row forward. I'm um, going from four colors all the way up to 13 colors in the final room and added just wow. a few detail colors on a few of the pieces. Yeah. So it's. That, that's, I'm exhausted hearing you. <laughs> it's like, wow, you must have a great supportive crew helping you. I do. I'm really blessed. I've got a great group of people. I've got great caregivers. I've got an amazing fiance. And then I had, you know, I had a great team behind me for that big project with that, for that large painting piece. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Doug, 